Okay, in this example, we have a standard six-sided die is rolled up until a six turns up. And so we're going to complete the probability distribution. And in doing so, when we do this, I know the probability of getting a one the very first time, I'm, it's a one in six chance. On the second throw to get a six, well, the first one was a fail, times the second one was a success. The third one, well, well there's two fails times a success, and so on. This is this, and if I define the random variable, think about what scenario is this. Think to yourself what it is, and you should have guessed geometric. And so k, if I do it k times, well, it's going to be 5 powers 5, 6 times to the k minus 1 times 1, 6, and so on. And this is the probability distribution. So finally, expect the value of the variance of this. Well, if we're going to do that, if I refer to my formula booklet, this is what I know about geometric. So my expected value of this, my expected value is simply going to be EX is going to be 1 over 1 over 6, which is 6. And the variance of X will be 5, 6 divided by 1 6 squared, which if you work on that, I've done that in the past, and it is going to give you 30. So there's our first bit. And this is review from before. So now, now I want to go to show the probability generating function g of t is this particular function here. Well, in order to do so, we're going to create our probability den our probability generating function from first principles. Oh, let me get rid of this. And to do so, to find the g of t, I know what I do is I take my probability times t to the power 1 take my probability times t to the power 2, and that's how I create it. So it's going to be 1 sixth times t to the 1 plus 5 six times 1 six t squared plus 5 six squared times 1 sixth cubed. And I'm going to do that all the way up to We'll do the kth term, or the nth term. That's going to be 5 6 to the n minus 1 times 1 6, and that is going to be t to the power of n. And this is my generating function for this particular distribution. And so what I'm going to do next is I recognize that there is a factor of 1 sixth t, and so I'm going to pull that out from every single scenario, and when I do that I get 1 plus 5 sixth t plus 5 sixth squared t squared, so this gets reduced by 1 plus all the way up to 5 sixth to the n minus 1 this is out, and I've taken one of these t's, and this is to the n minus 1. And so now if I look really carefully at this, this part here should look familiar to you. It's a geometric series, an infinite one, t. So this one's simply going to be, if I take u1, which is 1, plus 1 minus the ratio that's multiplied. Each time I multiply by 5, 6, t, 5, 6, t, and so on. This is going to be multiplied by 5, 6, t. Now, when I do some algebra on here, I distribute this, I get 1, 6, t, 1, 6, oh, let me do it even more clever than that. If I multiply the t on top, 1 times t, and then 6 times all the other ones is going to be 6 minus 5t. And this is exactly the probability generating function. 
And so that's a derivation of the geometric probability gen generating function. And so D part then says, <coughs> excuse me, D says to calculate G prime at one. Well, when I calculate G prime at one, I have to implore the, pro the quotient rule. So six minus five T squared, I'm gonna do T first of all, and six minus five T times one minus t times negative five. And so if I clean this up, I get, oh, I get six. Now these will cancel, this is a plus five t minus five, it will cancel over six minus five t squared. Now I want to find g prime at one. So if I do that, this ends up being six minus one, which is six. Now, the thing I want to bring your attention to is we found the expected value was six. And so what we can say is g prime at one, this here for any probably generating function is the expected value. Okay, now that's not a proof per se, but it's a rationalization of it with the geometric. Now, E part says to find G double prime at one. Well, to do so, we'll find G double prime T, working off the derivative here. I'm gonna rewrite that, using, uh, so it's six times six minus five T to the minus two. It's, so now I can apply the chain rule, so I get minus 12, 6 minus subtract 1 times minus 5, the inside derivative, which gives me 60, 6 minus 5t to the minus 3. And I'm asked to find g double prime at 1, plugging in the 1, gets me 60, well again this is going to be 1, and so it ends up being 60. If I look at variance, my variance, which has been erased, but your variance, hopefully you saw that the variance of this scenario, x was 30. So that's not the 60 that I got. So let's keep on going. F part now says to evaluate compute g double prime 1 plus g prime 1 minus g prime one squared, which seems like a fairly random computation, but when we do this calculation, I get 60 plus uh, six minus, six minus, six squared. When I do this computation, that is 30. And so this, you can see, was what the variance was of x. And so h, h says to generalize our results. And so if I generalize results, this is what I come up with. From my formula booklet, I can see the expected value is equal to g prime at one, and the variance is equal to g double prime at one plus g prime at one minus the square of g prime at one. And so this is handy from your formula booklet. We can use the generating function to calculate expected value and variance quite simply.